All right, my friends. <clears throat> let's get let's let's tap in. So it's been a while since I created any tutorials at all, and I've been seeing a lot of requests around a nice little like uh, dubstep visual that I just showed. And I'm gonna teach you how to pretty much like rotate some objects, kind of in a circle. Um, I'm not gonna focus so much around like the shaking effects and everything. If you're interested in that, just please let me know, and I can. Uh, make a shorter video around that as well. I'm gonna make everything pretty bite-sized, so let's dive right on in. So first things first, per usual, we're gonna want to be on EV here. We're gonna want to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections. For all my new friends, one second, I just gotta save some stuff. For all my new friends that haven't used Blender before, you're gonna to wanna to change something in your preferences. Within preferences, you're gonna have, within your animation tab, you're gonna want your default interpolation to be set to linear. Once that's a linear, you're all good to go. So one of the first things I want to focus on here is we're gonna need a model. So we're gonna need a model to <clears throat> rotate. So let's focus on that first and I'm just gonna show you where to go. I'm going to make a new window on Google Chrome, go to Sketchfab, it's a nice website. Make an account if you haven't, I'm sure it'll, it'll serve you later on. Look up Skull, downloadable, and I personally like this one because it won a lot of awards and it's a great model. So what you're going to do from there is you're just going to go ahead and download it. I believe I already downloaded it so I'm not going to even bother. Head over to Blender, go to File, uh, File, Import. I, oh, sorry. Download the 3D model. I personally like, I d do it OBJ. We don't need to worry about the textures linking up because we're going to make our own. So download it as an OBJ file. And when you come over to Blender, you're going to import the OBJ file. Skull downloadable source import OBJ. And from there you have your skull pretty much in the mix now. So what we're gonna do secondly here is we're gonna work with setting up the camera. We're super 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 simple. Hold down your tilde key, go to front view. Should match your skull hopefully. Shift A camera and what I like to do as well is right click right click between the divider go vertical split I hold down control split right in the middle and I hold down tilde on my right pane just to bring into the camera view and from there this will help you position your camera in the scene so I like to yeah I think this is about okay okay make sure you save okay a very simple setup here I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this skull. I'm gonna drag this a little bit because we really don't need to see the whole thing. Press Shift A again. And we're gonna bring in a circle. Now the circle is really cool. So what you're gonna do is make it a little bit bigger. More we'll fine tune soon. I think we'll be okay without the fine tuning. And what I'm gonna do now is select my skull. Click on the wrench for the modifiers and do curve. Curve object is gonna be your Bezier circle. And you'll see here. Um, it might it might flip for you too. So what you need to do is just flip, turn around. So you're gonna press R and then Z. Hold Control. Just turn that skull around. You can also press N, and then you can type in 180 on the Z axis for rotation. And from there, we have something set up. The skull got a lot closer to the camera, so it doesn't look it doesn't look as nice. Now, now you're like wondering, okay, how do I make more skulls and follow this curve? So what you're gonna do, and if you run into any issues, one thing you need to make sure is that circle that you put down and the skull needs to be in the same origin. So they both need to be kind of centered with each other. Otherwise, your results are going to vary. Cool. Now once you have 
your curve setup, put an array on your skull modifier. You're actually going to go ahead, you're going to see it's not really, it's not going with the circle. And the reason is because you need to put your array before that circle. And you got, there it is. Your circles are working around it. And you just turn up the x axis a little bit. You could have just have four, 2.3. And with that, now we have an equal measurement between each other. Sometimes I like to just finesse it a little bit more, but this is okay. Okay. So now we have our skull, our circle. And what you're going to do next is we want to parent that skull to the Bezier circle. So you're going to click, hold shift, and put it with the Bezier circle. Now when you rotate this on the z-axis, the skull's rotating. Give yourself a pat on the back. You you finished some of the harder part now at this point. The rest of this is going to be kind of manual now at this point. I'll focus on materials and everything later. I want to just dive right into the animation because I'm sure you probably have something custom that it doesn't really matter what it looks like material based. Okay. Now what you're going to do to make it just like shift over is... <clears throat> you're gonna select your Bezier circle and you're gonna just start keyframing. So what I what I did was you're gonna notice okay the Z rotation is the one that is the value that's gonna change. So what you're gonna do is actually a few things. It's like your camera again. We're gonna go on to our camera data properties. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the we're gonna focus on this viewport display. And we're going to make sure we can see that center composition guide. When you can see that center composition guide, it's going to help us massively. So what I do now, I'm going to keyframe, single keyframe here. I'm going to go about like 20 frames and just move it. Oops. Just move it and you want to center it. Insert a single one. And what you'll see here is now just and dude, I don't know what's going on with my desk it's like it's so warm um, from there you have this kind of rotation I might put in a bit of easing but for now let's just focus on making that rotation animation uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to copy this frame and what you're essentially doing now is we're creating oops how much time between is it going to stay still, right? So this is like kind of on your beat, like whatever song you have going. I'm going to, and then maybe right about 40. I'm just going to drag it over by pushing G and X. And then I'm going to go to 50. Looks like we have it 0, 20, 20 frames. You want to get kind of close to the time. Drag this over. I like to hold shift sometimes. So it's like super, super correct. Single keyframe. Now what you'll see here is we go boom, frozes, boom, moves, and let's just do one more. Okay, one, two, and then I had this going for about another twenty. So copy, move it to like eighty, and then we got ninety. I think I did twenty. Honestly, you'll get this, but right now we're just getting the initial movements here. Single keyframe. Okay, boom, stops, boom, stops, boom, stops. Okay, I think just one more now. So 20, paste that, go another 20. Let's just move it one more time. You're gonna notice your values are gonna be out of whack. I'm gonna try a quick little trick. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I just thought about it right now as I'm recording. So right now we kind of have like a bit of an animation here. Super simple. Spooky, spooky skeletons. Okay. Um, I got an idea. Okay. So I'm going to show you a quick little trick here to get this to kind of loop. It's kind of looping. If you have any recommendations, please let me know. What goes on here is we're going to go ahead and, you know, we have our animation we have our keyframes kind of set up. You could just end it right here and then call it a day because at least when it starts, it ends. It's a similar vibe. Um, but for those that don't want to do that, head over to the graph editor. You're going to notice 
you might need to do some scrolling or whatnot to get it to look exactly like mine. But don't don't worry. Press A. I mean, the, press your. I mean, click on the Z Euler rotation. And under modifiers, you're gonna go ahead and click cycles. I already kind of did it because I tried it off. But from there, essentially, it's just gonna repeat your animation for you. And it's gonna do something a little funky, but hey, it adds a little more character, it adds a little more flair to it all. Okay, um, and that's pretty much that's pretty much the entire animation. What I like to play around with, actually, wait, let's just add a little bit of a Bezier curve in this, just so these animations feel a bit more, you know, like a little, a little, a little something, something, and we'll just leave it at that. Now I'm going to show you a bit around the shading. I'm just going to enter the shading tab to not make this as confusing. Join area. We'll keep it really simple. Now we're going to play around with the shader. Thankfully, because we did this on one element, it won't be that confusing. It looks like it already has a little bit of material. What I did with mine is I bumped up the metallic, pulled down on the roughness to get that metal. I clicked on the skull, shade auto smooth, so we get a bit of a smooth skull. And then what I did next was, so I messed around with my camera. I'm just going to go ahead and put this vertical split. I'm speeding through this. I'm so sorry, but let me know if, if you really care about the materials here. There's a lot of things you can do. I'll probably link some like cool material tutorials that maybe you can reference. I brought in a light and super simple lighting setup here. I'm going to go ahead and enter render just so I can kind of see. You're going to want to also make sure that your world light is just turned off so you can really see what's going on. And what I did was I just like pointed the light. I brought it up and pointed it down by pressing R and Y. And I duplicate it and kind of bring it to the point there. And then what I did next was I brought another light by pressing Shift D and duplicating it. Move around G and X, and then you press this. And then I brought my light a little bit. Let me know if you want a light lighting tutorial as well, because I'm doing a lot here. Now you click on your light values. You can fuck with the colors if you want it to be kind of red like mine. You can just. And you can even get it to be kind of like multicolored. I played around with it. Maybe you can bump the bottom light up. And you can make it like a bit more of like a darker. And you zoom in. And you can kind of see with the animation. Our skulls are moving. The light is kind of moving. You could add a bit of glare or something. You can make some really cool effects. But we pretty much have a very, very simple visual. Um... The last thing I'll do for you all, since you have the materials, you got the camera, now we just need to figure out how to export. If you never export anything before, I'm going to make a really quick tutorial on that. So just go ahead and focus on your output here. You're going to pretty much a file selector. You're going to select what file you want this to save in. I personally will just render it as a FFmpeg video. Go to encoding. Make sure that container is an MPEG-4. Go ahead and professionally lossless. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and click render. Render animation. And it should be there. All right. Well, thanks for dropping on in. I'm using my phone camera for this. I didn't know Max can do this. I'm using Blender with my Mac. Um, <clears throat> I'm in Canada. We're learning a lot of new things, but I really want to uh, keep pushing out tutorials once again. So if there's certain effects, I'm going to do some more like more in depth, but focusing on small little parts. I think these things are probably better to just ingest in smaller parts. And then when you view them, you'll know how to add them to your project. But regardless, thank you so, so, so much for the support. Thank you, everyone that has stayed subscribed for all this time. Thank you for all the new folks that have come by and just like sent me messages. I've had messages of people asking me like, are you okay and all this? So this is, I'm really grateful for the reminder of, I guess, what these videos are doing for people. So I love you um, and I'll see you around.